Hello and happy Tuesday. You are live with Sandra at It's All About Choices, where every Tuesday I have the pleasure of dishing out your weekly dose of nutrition and wellness news for your mind and your body and your soul. And I hope that everybody has had a wonderful weekend so far, and I hope your week is going well. And so thank you for tuning in live. I appreciate everybody who takes time to pause just to tune in for some news that will help move you forward. And hopefully you're pausing, you're having lunch, you're taking a little break from the hustle and bustle of the day. And for those who listen into the replay, I thank you for pausing to tune in, to take a little break and to get some news that will help move you and your family forward. And so March is the month of your all-time favorite topics. And so I look forward to doing this every March, kind of that March madness kind of feel. And so we're bringing back some of your favorite topics and in, in, that you view the most and that you responded to and that resonated with you most. And so today we are talking about whole grains, okay? Whole grains for whole health. What is so wonderful about whole grains and how does it affect your health, your weight, your mind, your body, all of that. And so many people are not aware that most Americans are, are not getting enough whole grains daily. The average American eats less than one serving of whole grains each day, which is equivalent to a slice of whole wheat bread or a half a cup of cooked oatmeal. And some studies have even shown that about 40% of, of people do not consume any whole grains in their day. So it's a big difference. So uh, we want to make sure we're getting in the whole grains. And so everyone requires an adequate amount of whole grains daily, including those who are pre-diabetic and those who have diabetes. And so the amount of whole grains required is very specific to the individual. Okay. And so today I will share three secrets about how to incorporate your favorite whole grains while still losing weight, keeping your blood sugar in check. And this includes keeping your food cravings in check as well. And so here, stay tuned and hear how you can have your cake and eat it too. That's what it's all about. <laughs> so for those who do not know me, my name is Sandra Goltry and I'm a registered dietitian, certified personal trainer and your accountability partner. And my mission is to show people how to get food to work for them instead of thinking about food as the enemy, okay? Especially specific food groups or food types that they feel are the enemy. So I take joy in adding a, vari a variety of different types of foods to a client's list so that they lose weight, so that they can keep it off, so they have energy levels when they wake up and going through their day and ultimately just feeling good about themselves without dieting and feeling deprivation. It's about having lifestyle goals that last the long haul instead of some kind of quick fix. And so in 2023, I'm extending my motto of breaking the food strongholds. And we are talking about creating a lifestyle of self-care. And that is so important. That is so important. And, and it feeds into the food choices that we make. So as I see people tuning in, please feel free to introduce yourself, say where you're tuning in from, and hey, share with me your favorite whole grain food, okay? <laughs> and so, and those who are tuning in, we are talking about your favorite topics. We're talking, March is kind of that March Madness feel theme going on. So we're talking about your favorite topics that you reply to the most, that you responded to the most. And so I want to bring that back to you so we can kind of revise it, revisit it, and kind of give you a, a, a little bit of a reboot here. So we're talking specifically about whole grains for whole health. What is so wonderful about whole grains and how do they affect your, your weight, your health, and your wellness, okay? And so I always like to open up with a question. And so we are going to talk about, I have a question. I love to pose this. So what is your opinion? Do you feel carbs make you gain weight? Yes, no, maybe, you can even add don't know. <laughs> Do you feel that carbs make you gain weight? Okay, so don't overthink it. Just put out there, yes, no, maybe, okay? Or I don't know. So, and when I say, when I say uh, carbs, like starches, like bread, like rice, uh, things that people, potatoes, you know, I'm trying to think about things that people tend to kind of shy away from. So what do you think? So let's, but let's find out. So to, let's find out. So let's start with the basics of whole grains 101, okay? Whole grains 101. And I'll look for your comments as you tune in to let me know what you think about carbs making you gain weight, yes or no. So whole grains 101. So carbohydrates are, are one of the main 
sources of energy for our body, okay? It is the preferred energy source for our brain, okay? And many don't know this. And so there are three food groups that make up carbs. Carbs is an umbrella term, okay? This is what I share with my clients, the umbrella carbs. Many people say, oh, I cut carbs or I restrict carbs or I don't eat carbs. Well, everybody eats carbs. So that def they're definitely not doing that. So that just shows that there is not an understanding of what carbs are. So carbs are three food groups, okay? Grain, the starch, starch food group are grains, fruit, fructose, and dairy, lactose, okay? And of these three food groups, most of your calories should come from whole grains, which is the number one food group. Well, one, I say a close number one. <laughs> Dairy is the other one. A uh, food group that people tend to restrict and our body needs it. It has its purpose. It has its place. So what are whole grains? So whole grains have three parts of the grain, okay? The seed. The bran is the outer layer and that protects the seed. That's where we have a lot of, that's where a lot of our fiber comes from. Many of our B vitamins, okay, and minerals. Then you have the germ, which is the nourishment of that seed. And the B vitamins are uh, also phytonutrients, which phytonutrients are a chemical that's produced by plants that provides an antioxidant properties as well as anti-inflammatory properties. So think about cancer prevention and inflammation prevention and things like that, or management, as well as minerals. That's the germ. And then you have the endosperm, which is what provides the energy. So this is the carbs part of it. Uh, carbs and pro some protein and some also some B vitamins, okay? And so that's what a whole grain is. It is a seed and it's composed of these three components. And so when it comes to 100% whole grain foods, think fiber, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, again, cancer prevent, per, uh, per, per, uh, protecting as well as satiety. And so what are those results? You're getting better management of your weight. You're reducing your risk of heart disease, some cancers, diabetes, and other health problems, constipation, etc. And so that is what we mean when we say we have the whole, okay? And so I'm going to ask you this question. And so which ones do you, uh, or which ones did you already know were already whole grains? And so what foods, so we have grains, we have fruit, and we have dairy. So these are food groups, okay? So which ones did you already know were considered carbohydrates and which ones are new to you, okay? And so these foods and all these foods feed our brain. And remember, it's the preferred fuel for our brain over protein and over fat. Now, don't get it twisted. Our, our bodies are very sophisticated. So when we do these diets and we're cutting out carbs and we're only eating protein, and we're only eating vegetables. Yes, our body will adapt. Our bodies will, are, will adapt to what we do and don't do. That's not always a good thing, but it will adapt. It will do what it can to keep the body in equilibrium, to keep you humming, to keep you alive. But again, eventually, if it's overworking itself or doing things that is not natural, eventually it will cause problems. And so that's what um, that's what the diets don't tell you, okay? They tell you the short-term effects, but they don't tell you the longer-term effects all the time. So which ones was a surprise? Which one did you, which food groups did you already know were considered a carb, okay? Grains, fruit, and dairy. All right. And so moving on to our next topic, how do you find whole grains? So how do you know a food is whole grain? And I will say just because we'll, we'll use bread as an example. So don't be fooled by the color, okay? If it's brown, does that, that does not mean that it's whole grain or whole wheat, okay? <laughs> and so we want to make sure that that's just because the packaging says multi-grain or 24 grain, that does not necessarily mean that it is whole wheat, okay? And, and so, and, and it's, and being white, does not always mean that it's made from more fine white flour. So this is where label reading, education, and knowledge has a lot of importance. And so these breads may get their color from, from brown food coloring, from molasses, from caramel. So that's what makes it brown, not necessarily making it a whole grain. Okay. So some food labeling mark and marketing hype, <laughs> that's what I like to call it. Um, many products will read on the front cover made with whole wheat. Okay. Made with whole wheat. Well, not all whole wheat is the same as whole grain, okay? And so it sounds like a, it sounds like a healthy choice. It looks like a healthy choice, but when it's made with whole wheat, most of that germ, which was the nourishment for the seed and the grain, and some of the bran, which is that protective outer covering that has the fiber from that wheat may have been removed, okay, to give it 
uh, to give that flower a longer shelf life. Okay, that's that's really the point of stripping away some of this stuff. Oh, the taste, yes, but a lot of it is to extend the shelf life of the food. And so, hint, highly processed, think about highly processed snack foods. These are convenient. They're all in one box, meals uh, and such. And, you know, well, how can they stay on the shelf so long? You know, you, it's kind of scary sometimes when you think about it. <laughs> and so this is one of my favorite marketing hype labeling is also also with gluten free. That's another one that's a, a, a favorite uh, marketing. And we're going to talk about that this month as well. Uh, cholesterol free. And when the food is already when the food is already naturally cholesterol free or gluten free. So they'll kind of point out that, oh, well, this food is gluten free when it's not even a starch type food. OK, it's a it's a food that wouldn't even have had gluten in it in the first place or it's cholesterol free when it's a plant based product because cholesterol is only an animal <laughs> product. So but when you don't have that knowledge and you see it and it looks good and the marketing is great, you think you're really making a, a good choice. And so that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> OK, OK, so products that say multi grain stone ground or even seven grain may not actually be a whole grain okay so you got to look at the ingredient list and you have to select products with whole grain listed at the beginning of the ingredient list so what you need to look at you need to look at the label and the first thing that it should say is either 100 percent whole rice whole granola whole flour whole whatever the food is or it should say um whole so either 100 percent or it's going to say whole so anything other than the word enriched if you see the word enriched, that means it has been stripped, that seed has been stripped of some of those vital natural nutrients that we had talked about in order to extend the shelf life that for one reason <clears throat> or to in, in, or to change the taste and make it taste better. So you should see whole grain. You should see whole in the grain name like corn or something like that. You, you, and you may also see just brown rice or you may see oats or you may see oatmeal. So you have to. So this is where a little bit of food education or food knowledge kind of comes in to help you to really identify the difference between marketing height and what's actually nutrition information on a label or on the front of the packaging as well. All righty. And so let me ask you this. And so let's see here. We have brown rice, we have whole wheat pasta, and we have whole grain bread or none. So which ones of these are staples in your house? Okay, which ones are staples? So you have some, and it's okay to not like brown rice, you prefer white rice, that's fine. Every serving of grain that you have or starch that you have does not have to come in the whole grain form. The more the better, but every single one doesn't have to. So you have to kind of juggle your preference, your taste, versus making sure you're also getting your fiber in for the day to keep your GI system healthy. So which ones is a staple in your house, okay? For me, all three. But if you have at least one, that's great. You know, that's great. And you can and you can add to that list, all right? All righty, let's see here. I see a few comments here and I did forget to log on to Facebook, but that's all right. So um, brown rice. So thank you for, for pointing out brown rice is a staple in your house. Thank you very much. I won't take time to to log into the into the Facebook group. So if you want to put your name <laughs> with your comment, great. Otherwise, and I'm just going to have to just say your, say the comment generically. <laughs> so thank you for responding. And so next topic, adding whole grains to your meals. How do you do that? So you want to add whole grains to your meals and snacks as well throughout your day. Okay. Because that's one of the ways you're going to get the recommended fiber allowance that your body that is needed for your body daily. You need to eat it throughout your day. Not one meal is going to cut it. <laughs> and so you want to change your cooking style to include more whole grains and boost your dietary fiber content of all your meals when possible. So partnering whole grains with vegetables. So you have brown rice with some vegetable stir fry or whole wheat pita stuff with, with, with salad, darker leaves and vegetables and things like that, as well as your protein, as well as some fats as well, like hummus and stuff like that to make uh, something that's that's tasty and hearty, or fortified dishes that are that are high, that have high fiber containing ingredients. So like adding bran or adding oatmeal to a meatloaf, or tossing quinoa or or wheat berries into a salad. So this is where recipes are great because if you're not culinary savvy. I love to read recipes. I'm not creating recipes, but I love to read them. And so when you find recipes that are that from people that are really good with mixing the different plant-based sources of 
of various various foods and, and, and sauces and spices and herbs and things like that, that just benefits you because you don't have to figure out how to pair all that stuff. You don't have to figure out all that stuff. You just buy it, cook it, <laughs> and then you doctor it up. You know, you doctor it up. So I love taking um, vegan meals or vegetarian or plant-based meals and making them. And sometimes and you could always add protein to them, but at least you have that vegetable base and a lot of other plant-based ingredients that go along with it to increase the nutrient power. So think about that. <clears throat> so some quick ways to include more whole grains in your family meals as well as snacks. So here are some ideals of how you can do that. So whole grains, they have this, they have this nutty taste in in many cases it depends on your palate it is it's not like it used to like eating grape nuts you know it's not like that anymore so and a lot of them are affordable you can eat healthy whole grain whole whole foods on a budget so some ways to do that is whole a bowl of um, whole grain cereal like bran flakes you can do cooked cereal such as oatmeal in the morning top it with some berries some other fruit add fi and that adds fiber and nutrients to it you can do the bite-sized whole grain cereal packets um, in, in the plastic bag as a quick start. You can do whole grain cereal bars. You can do 100% whole wheat bread, tortillas, bagels, the English muffins. You have the pita pockets. And you don't have to go and take caution here. Going low carb, no carb, light carb, that's not what we're aiming for here. We're aiming because that's not the whole natural state of that food. Okay, So believe you me, a lot of processing has been done to make that carb low and so it's so you're you, and you almost lose the you know sometimes they'll beef up the, the fiber and things like that but just know that that's not the natural state of the food so it's, it's it is being altered and then there's some processing going on there you can do small muffins made with bran um even whole grain cornmeal you have your popcorn a lot of times people don't realize air pop popcorn without the excess of butter and salt you can have some in there but just not the movie butter popcorn <laughs> And things like that. You have low fat, you have whole wheat crackers. So you have the Triscuits, you have wheat thins, you have various other brands of whole wheat crackers. So there's plenty of ways to get it in. But like I said, recipes are very, very, very key. Okay. Recipes are key. So share your, I would love to hear some of your favorite whole grain snacks or meals. So share anything that, that um, is a favorite for you. Not just throw some stuff out there for me. Breakfast, you can have a, a avocado toast. Um, so that's a very good one. And you can, in, or you can have oatmeal base either cooked or overnight. And so in, in, with the avocado toast, you can even, even beef it up by, there's a recipe where you could put navy beans in them, white beans in them to help boost up the, the protein because the avocado is more of a fat. And so it's going to have, but, but you need something to kind of beef up that protein. And then you have uh, like chickpeas with a, with a, with a peanut sauce over rice. So that is something you can do at lunch and pesto shrimp pasta. So that's something that's a favorite in, in my household. And you can actually get whole wheat fettuccine. And so I have to order it from Amazon. It's nothing that I find in the store, but there is a way to make certain dishes. We can increase the, the nutritional value of certain recipes. And so whole grains are vital to our health, okay? And they provide many, many, many health benefits, okay? And such as supporting healthy GI health, okay? So a lot of times when my clients come to me and they have a lot of GI issues, they react to things, just their body just doesn't react to things. And some things, some of those, those reactions are just, hmm, that's not normal. You know, and a lot of times there's a lot of room. You always want to work on the things that are modifiable. In a lot of cases, when there's a lot of GI problems going on, it has to do with your eating history and maybe having a level of nutritional deficiencies. And so once a lot of that is addressed, and I call it healing from the inside, healing your gut, healing your nutritional deficiencies, getting you more nutritionally fit, then a lot of that erases or removes a lot of those crazy reactions you have to, to things. Some people will take an allergy test and I'm like, everything is yellow, everything is red. I'm like, okay, what can you eat? So sometimes those tests are not as accurate if there's so many deficiencies going on. Once we correct some of those deficiencies, Take the test again so we can see like what really is uh, an allergic reaction that you have to certain foods. Um, having whole grains, adequate whole grains in your in your eating pattern reduces many risks of some cancers, okay? Helps to improve your glucose levels, okay? So again, when you're pre-diabetic and your diabetes, that doesn't mean no carbs. That's the worst thing you can do, okay? That will raise your sugar levels, okay? Better weight management, 
better and provides many vitamins and minerals, antioxidants, phytonutrients naturally, okay, versus it coming from some kind of a supplement, okay? You always, your food is your number one supplement in many cases, okay? In all cases, I like to say food is medicine. And so overall, your nutrition plan should be focused on balanced eating, healthy patterns, and not just focusing on one food group. You don't want to overdo it in one food group and not have enough of another. So there's certain servings that's recommended for our bodies, our age, our gender, that's recommended for, for optimal health, okay? And of course, there's exceptions, but for the most part, there is a, a general healthy eating pattern that everybody will benefit from by having a certain number of servings of all of the different food groups. And so a balanced diet includes having a variety of fruits and vegetables, lean protein, low-fat dairy, grains, and, things, and heart-healthy fats. All this stuff plays a role, but understanding how all those pieces fit is what is what's key, and that's the that's the secret sauce that many people miss. And so there, um, there's also the interaction between two or more nutrients with other health substances that makes work that makes food work together even better. Okay, so so there's no one food that we need. No one food has it all. So when you are combining foods and combining throughout your day, it's not necessarily in one single meal that you have to do this combination, but throughout your day, it just increases the nutritional value and the absorption in your body, which is what we want. And so health benefits are produced that that each individually like that each that one food individually cannot do on its own. So it's, it's all about synergy, all about synergy. <clears throat> All right. And so how do we put all of this together? I think I see some comments here. Let me look around. Brown. Okay. I need to add to my list. Ah, graham crackers with avocado. That I have not heard that combination. That is a good combination. Okay. And see, I love it when people think outside the box because it's variety. I mean, be, get creative. It doesn't have to seem like the typical pairing. So that's good. Graham crackers with some avocado. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. And so how would, would you like to get a jump on how to get more whole grains, such as the oats, the bread, the quinoa, the, the brown rice, but any, is so many, I can't even name them all because there's starchy vegetables. There's the grains, there's the breads. There's so many different types of, of, of whole grains that we can get. And so if you're somebody who's, who's been struggling with weight, some people have been struggling since childhood. Some people, maybe it's a new onset as an adult. Either case, your the weight is an issue and you're trying to get a handle on it. Most likely it's impacting how you feel about yourself. It's predisposing you to blood pressure, high blood pressure, poor sleeping uh, quality, your cholesterol levels, high sugar levels, uh, pre-diabetes, you know, that kind of would, would fall into that realm as well. Or you just crave it. If you have uncontrollable cravings, a lot of that has to do with just not the body is missing something. It needs something, and, and that's what it needs. So I encourage you, I implore you to download my amazing guide, my free guide. It's called Jumpstart Your Weight Loss and Boost Your Energy Levels. It's, it includes five days of meals, recipes, it's itemized grocery list, meal prep guide, and it has a variety of whole grains. OK, so it's not nothing that you're just eating, drinking green smoothies all the time or you're eating salads all the time. So you're going to see a variety of whole grains throughout the day. OK, spread out. So click um, to grab your copy. It is free and I encourage you to try. You know, you can do individual meals or you can do the whole five day meal plan and in, in, in how it's written out. But it's, it's definitely a good opportunity to open your eyes to some different different flavors and some different ways of preparing things. And the meals are easy. So to always know that the meals are easy to prepare and the guide will help you to prepare things in, in bulk so you're not doing stuff every single day. So grabbing and going is really the big takeaway in addition to, of course, feeling better and, and, and getting your body those nutrients. You're gonna have the opportunity to take advantage of what grab and go means. When you have a hectic week and you don't have to cook, you don't have to figure out what it is you're gonna eat, it's right there. <laughs> for you. Okay. And so if you have any questions or comments, definitely reach out. And this concludes what I have for this week of your weekly dose of your nutrition and news for your mind, your body, and your soul. I encourage you to go down, go to actionchoices.com forward slash jumpstart, actionchoices.com forward slash jumpstart to grab your free newly revised five-day meal plan to jumpstart, not just your weight loss, but energy levels. And so you feel better. And just that that comfort of knowing that you're getting your body 
the the nutrients that it needs and the best that it needs. So thank you for tuning in live. Thank you for listening to the replay. And remember, we are creating a lifestyle of change in 2023. And so next week, we are going to continue on your all-time favorites, and we're going to talk about gluten-free. I tell you, that's, a, that's still a buzz. So we're going to talk about gluten-free. Is gluten-free the healthier way to eat? Okay. Is it the healthy way to eat for good health as well as weight loss? What are your thoughts on that? So tune in next week to find out more. Bye for now and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks. Bye-bye.